My mother is a writer, Hilma Wallitzer. She's always inspired me. Virginia Woolf, who shares my mother's birthday, or rather my mother shares her birthday. Uh, she's been a writer I've really loved. Uh, Elizabeth Strout, who wrote Olive Kitteridge, uh, is a wonderful writer. Um, I just, I'm excited by anyone who's really kind of tackling something hard and big and doing it beautifully. I sold my first novel when I was in college, so that was very, very exciting. I uh, sold it for $5,000, and that was a lot of money for me. Um, but it, before then, I'd been writing all the time, but just for myself and for, you know, in school. But I loved it. It made me happiest to, to write. So I think anybody who can do what they really love is so fortunate. I, I feel really lucky. I don't think there's one book, but I will say that the first book that made me feel strong feelings was when I was a child. It was Charlotte's Web. Uh, it was a really powerful experience reading that book. I read it with my mother, and when Charlotte dies, oh, sorry, I'm giving away the ending to those of you out there who haven't read it. Um, you know, E.B. White was really writing about mortality, writing about things that when you're six or seven years old, which is how old I was when I read it, I hadn't thought about us fully yet, and, and he helped me think about it in ways that were painful and comforting, the way literature can be. You know, you have to have a sensibility. You have to have a way of being in the world, which is something that Zadie Smith has written about. I know she was here uh, giving a lecture, but I've been, I've loved her essays, and she talks about, uh, you know, when I write, I'm trying to express my way of being in the world. And I think that if you try to do that, it will come out in different ways. And you can write for young people, and you can write for older people. Well, one thing I would like to say, if I were a book, I might escape the W to Z author section that all my books are housed in at your feet. I might actually kind of be around eye level uh, in fiction. <laughs> At home in the morning, uh, when the day is not uh, ruined yet, you know, when I'm not angry with myself for not writing as much as I would like, uh, it's kind of diminishing returns as the day goes on. So the morning is pretty good. You feel, if you've had a good night's sleep, which is really important to me, um, I feel happy in the morning. Like the way babies wake up, I like to wake up that way. I do love. To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf, my fellow sharer of the W. Z. shelves. Um, you know, it's a beautiful book. It's a, it deals with mortality. It deals with, it's about language. It's about time passing. It's about a family. It's about creativity. Um, and I think that you can read that book and understand why, why it's so important. And maybe if, you don't have to be a writer to read it that way. And I think that books, Books are helpful in the world because they show us how other people live. They teach empathy. But they're helpful to writers to feel excited about their own work. If there's a little overlap between the way another writer was just sort of thinking about language or character. But they're also helpful, of course, to readers to make them want to read more, to understand why reading really, really matters. Because we live in a world where you could go for the rest of your life never reading a book after school. And that, to me, is a sad fate uh, because books hold so much and to read something that's really beautiful and really important might make you remember that that is true. Writing a novel that's due pretty much now and I won't really say anything about it because I don't really know what it is until I kind of get it into shape but it's another, I will say that it's another long novel with a lot of characters and um, it I'm very excited about it. It's happy, you know, it's scary to have a new book, but that's what we do. We go from book to book. <laughs>